Yeah, I kind of think that BFs are actually, as we are starting with the game itself, kind of uh, copying what NCs are doing because migration is basically the whole map of new chapter. They very much like to play it, especially in expert games against their opponents. So I'm really thinking that they they may they might have learned that in NC zone or something. So let's see how it's going to go for them. So. The map, at least from my point of view, looks kind of okay, at least as far as fish go. Maybe the right corner is kind of lower on fish, but otherwise, do you see any kind of problems for either of the players? Uh, well, the fish? they might be the tricky part. I'm not sure that uh, on the right side of the map, between uh, red and green, maybe the gully could go straight through the middle. There's like a one tile of uh, <laughs> sand, so I'm not sure if it's accessible. It could be, and well, that that's could funny. change a lot. That's really pretty funny. <laughs> I don't really think that it's going to be possible for guys, but really it might be if it's just some kind of lucky spawn. We're going to be seeing pretty soon, I guess. But if it isn't, well, that's a pretty curious map indeed. Yeah. And it would be like sometimes on migration, it, it's uh, kind of rare. I think it's like that 10, 20 percent chance uh, that there is not that uh, corner of the main island between the players and they yeah. are straight next to each other. So sometimes when guy, some, one guy is going for like uh, several dog fish boom and the other guy is going fully aggressive, he can completely kill the other guy. But uh, yeah, maybe you're right, maybe it's not accessible. One, one thing which, which, is in, uh, which is interesting on the left side is that Teal got a landlock on his yeah. uh, left side. Uh, which, which is a really important thing when you're playing Migration, especially when you are like trying to play defensive and just uh, trying to cover the pocket fish, just trying to fish boom. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, team map for is for this is uh, perfect. Yeah, it's going to be pretty easy for him to defend. And if, if you look at the yellow map, he got extremely good uh, fish. So maybe he will just try to fish boom very hard, and team might try to hold his fish. Yeah, quite it a lot might of be them the strategy the... for RCL, I think. Yeah, on the left side, and it seems to be that so far he's having a bit of fun with the deer on the right side of the island, but he really cannot pick a, a wrong place for his dog, so it doesn't really matter where he places his dog. I fully expect that it's going to be somewhere at the bottom. He's not really going to be going for the channel in the middle. I don't really expect that. That would be pretty terrible, because there's a lot of nothing in there. So in case he lucked into that, that would be pretty bad. But yeah, as you say, it's going to be pretty easy for Alyosha to boom in here, and with the potential defensive position of Blitzkrieg on the left, we should be able to defend the position in there reasonably okay, because he's not at least fighting Vikings. That's J squared in the pocket, that's slightly unfortunate for BF of course, not having Viking on the flank. So it should be really quite interesting to see if RCLs are going to be able to take advantage of the map overall. So far I don't see anything it would be all that bad. Maybe the goal distribution of the mainland seems kind of fishy. It's mo a bit more to the left, but there is at least something on the right. Do you see some kind of significant problem that it could be posing? Yeah, like I said, on the left side of the main mm -hmm. island, like the most of the important resources like gold and stone are on that left side. So it will be really important who will take over that part of the mainland. The, the, Control of the water is important, but sometimes uh, the map control of mainland is even more important. So let's see who will uh, first find out where the important gold positions are and who will try to take over that part of the map. And one thing uh, which is interesting to mention is that uh, blue as a pocket is really far away from green. Yeah, it definitely is. It might kind of force him to go for the left side, which, well, he's going to be fighting with the Persian, which is probably going to be the, the one that should be advancing onto the mainland first, as Persians do like to boom and place the town centers and whatnot on these maps like this and literally any map. So it's kind of going to be interesting if maybe this squad is going to be basically the bearing the brunt of the water fights for them as a Viking and maybe allowing Elkwark to basically boom a bit and advance it to the land faster. Could be maybe some kind of strategy for Black Forest on the left. 
but it of course is going to mean that Philip AJS is going to be having a pretty tough time on the right side as, as Japanese he'll go bit he, sorry he's going to be fighting against white court and even potentially Alyosha if he decides to go for a bit more water oh so yeah this might really develop into some two versus ones on either side not really exactly sure what to make of it it's probably going to be seen how players communicate and how they decide where they go with all their actions and such the the usual meta on this map is like the pocket fish booms are a lot with like three four even five dogs and then he slings either both flanks or just one flank it depends who needs for the sling most and then he tries to take over the mainland so let's see uh, how will the sling in this game develop yeah I'll show My, this. migration is a very lot about sling especially from the pocket to flanks yeah, Alyosha is already having double dock with J squared finishing just now. So yeah, yellow should be quite faster than the Viking on the other team. Looking at the villages, that doesn't seem really to be any kind of difference, but it's kind of looking like that everybody's aiming for fast castle. More or less, just El Quack is advancing into fuel right about now. Philip as well at 24, but those guys at 25, they seem to be aiming for the 27 and the fast castle, so Interesting if all three from RCL actually going for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm very surprised that uh, Alios has still got only two dogs. It looks like he might uh, he might play and not slink at all, maybe. Yeah, it seems like that he might. He is right now having seven fishing boats, 27, or rather 26, 27 right about now. So let's switch into Alyosha, how he's prepared for advancing to the next age, building extra, so going for 29 probably. Yeah, just clicking one extra, and that should probably be it. He also made a uh, mill very early. Yeah. But I guess that's, it's because uh, the deers were very far away, mm -hmm. and there was also a shorefish, which is a really nice uh, source of uh, food. I think it's even uh, faster than boars, right? Yeah, I think it's the fastest. The shorefish are actually the fastest food source. And that's a pretty good spot for him because he doesn't need to worry about anything this soon, of course. So not any kind of raiding at like 10 minutes. So that's a pretty good placement and good investment of the wood, I think. As it will pay off in a stronger boom, I think. So he might be tempted all that much more to go into the fast castle and not be disrupted by anything else. It should be pretty fast fast castle from him, I would be expecting. As the first galleys are coming in from the purple player, El Quark on the left. Whereas Steel is still not even advancing and he's at 31 villies already. <laughs> Somebody's getting greedy almost, it seems. Yeah, they are pretty close to each other. So I think uh, Bliss Creek went too heavily into fish boats and he might have problems because uh, Quark are uh, very aggressively with his Grush. Yeah, I think that's going to be a bit more problem than actually Blitzkrieg is right now realizing because if he loses the water convincingly, which he should be right about now, it's of course going to threaten the yellow player as well in the pocket. And he might be losing a lot of economy basically <laughs> because of his teammate. So I'm not exactly sure if yellow will be all that happy about this. Yeah, but in the Quark position, it's most important to just like try to sneak two or three galleys into the pocket player. Yeah. Because but when he when he kills like I don't know five ten or even more fishing boats from the other pocket, he's gonna gain them a huge advantage for uh, his own pocket. And looks like that's that's exactly what he's doing. He's uh, sending those two galleys straight to the pocket. I think he's chasing those fish boats. Yeah. But he he might go straight to yellow, and yellow might be in real problem. So yellow has just now advanced into Fuel Age. And he's housed actually. <laughs> he's trying to build galleys but cannot. Well that's that's unfortunate for him, let's say. <laughs> Definitely not going to help in the early defense. And he has just dropped, of course, Blacksmith. So advancing into castle, same as White Court. So that's kinda expected. Blitzkrieg just about now hitting Fuel Age with 32 VDs, 13 fishing boats. So that's interesting by him, and well, you already see a bit of scouting by Purple who has been able to capture a few sheep on there which is definitely going to help 
as you should be getting a good lay of the land and discover that a lot of resources are in there which is basically going to be prompting faster landing from him i would be expecting but so far he seems to be missing all the mines <laughs> with the sheep all right now he's coming the gold oh he knows so he knows that he should be aiming for a pretty fast landing rather than anything else on the right seems like there's going to be a first encounter as white court is playing quite passively it seems I don't really remember him seeing him, or rather seeing him going into any kind of engagement with Philip AJS yet. He's basically just waiting, booming, and waiting for the castle age yet again. J Squad is going to be the fast, fastest into castle from BFs. And Blitzkrieg right now clicking into castle as well. So, yep, actually, all three RCLs are going for fast castle. So, let's see if they are going to be paying for it, especially on the left, because the army of the purple player is right now making life quite difficult for yellow who is having to defend so far but since he's already into castle almost it seems like that he might be just in time with the war galleys to basically put a stop to this radium from the purple player it looks like the blue is going fully water as well i'm not sure if it's the smartest idea considering he's so far away to both of his flanks maybe he can join uh, the forces with Quark, but I think it would be much more efficient if he just slung them both. Then I think uh, both Quark and Green could gain advantage over their flanks, yeah, especially after the trading from Quark on yellow player. But let's see. So, so far, the, uh, the best play in this game I think is from Quark. He harassed both Teal and Yellow. He basically forced the yellow to make galleys, guard his own fishing boat. Yeah, that's that was definitely very important, but right now it could be actually turning against them because the castle ages are of course quite faster from their opponents, and it seems like that the white court on the right was able to amass quite a decent amount of boats. And even though Philip AGS is just clicking into castle age, there's going to be a pretty good opportunity to take some fight. And Green will have to be careful not to really engage just about now. Because of course he doesn't want to take this fight that would be quite disastrous for him at this stage, I think. And on the left we see that Yellow is also already having a war galleys. But since the number of boats from Elquark is pretty big, it doesn't seem like that Elquark really needs to retreat all that much. And since J Squad is just joined at the bottom, so basically as we expected at the very start, that blue is going to be fighting together with the one that is closer to him, that's El Quark. Well, we are going to be seeing a double on the bottom. And this should be quite convincingly going for BF still. But let's see. There is still a few time, or rather some time left for RCLs to do something, as El Quark is just now halfway into Castle Age. But once he advances, there could be a pretty good chance for BFs to somehow put RCL out of the water, at least on the left side, because on the right it doesn't seem like, at least looking at the main map, that the white court should be losing all that much against Philip AJS so far. I'm pretty surprised that no one actually tried to land the middle of the island at all. Yeah, nobody is really landing. I just see just the sheep from the purple player. And there is one sheep from Teal, so Blitzkrieg can also scout with the sheep a bit, but he probably doesn't want to do that all that much, or maybe he just engaged with Micro in his boats or something. Yeah, he's not really any penny, sorry, paying any attention to his sheep on the mainland, which is kind of a shame, I would be thinking right about now. But we are at 22 minutes, and j Scott is clicking into Imperial Age as the first one of them all. Kind of surprising that it is an Alyosha. J squared is at 41 wheelies, 22 fishing boats, Alyosha is at 40 wheelies and 15 fishing boats. So even though Alyosha should have been having a slightly better economy, according to the start that we were actually seeing, it doesn't seem like that it's going to be paying off all that much. And that was basically the same in the last game. Alyosha was having the weakest economy. And he had yeah, to but be... if, you, if you remember, uh, El Quark harassed his fish boats with his early galleys, so I think it slowed down Elisha's boom yeah, a lot. Yeah, could be. And he was forced to make those galleys very early. I think earlier than he, he would like to. So that's why the blue got uh, 
economy advantage now. Yeah, that's quite probable. On the left we already see that all the players are having war galleys, so that's pretty much an equal fight. But looking at the sheer numbers, it's kinda equal. But maybe slightly going for Elquark once they arrive at his docks. As he should be having faster replenishments of course, and that makes quite a lot of difference in the fights. As they are all about the numbers on the water. And, well, yeah, it seems like that Elquark is basically just waiting for something. And maybe that something is ballistics and... Maybe even the Imperial Age from J-squared to Galeons. It's a pretty big fight right now. BS are thinking that they can engage and they seem to be doing fairly well. Uh, both pockets got armor on their galleys, which is uh, kind of important to operate on migration. Yeah, they seem to be thinking, our skills that they really need to retreat, but they're probably going to be quite surprised by the Imperial Age by J squared. And he's going for coinage, so yeah, he's going to be slinging pretty soon, it seems. Just supporting the water and then sending something into somebody, but we already see some landings. And that's Blix Kick and White Court, so both the flanks from Arcia are already on the land, with castle being built on the left side by the Mayan. And they are attempting to right now basically conquer mainland whereas the opponents are not doing anything like that but yeah just even, as i even said even shall land it in the middle now so all of the all players from the rcr are on the mainland yeah, while no one from the bf even attempted to land actually at the top bf uh, j square has just landed trying to build a rock in there at the very top at the corner and well it's kind of sucky position for him because he has basically just the gold on the right side not anything else and he's going to be discovered by Alyosha, which is of course going to be pretty tough, as the scout is already moving exactly into the position. He's going to be seeing what is in there, and well, yeah, the castle from Blitzkrieg with the plumed archers already coming out is not really good news for BFs. Uh, you uh, see, what I was talking about in the beginning, uh, the land between red and green yeah, is accessible yeah. through the spot. <laughs> So, uh, the J squared Galleons are on the red player now. And I kinda think that actually this is discovered just now. Because I don't see another reason why Philip HS would be at the start going through the right side when he had the direct access. He probably didn't know, he didn't realize, so... <laughs> That's kinda lucky for him, because it will help him a lot. And yeah, you can see that it definitely is to get a bit J squared. As the Galleons are really <laughs> making life very difficult for a white court and... Let's see if they are not kinda too late with trying to dominate the water because the landing is basically finished by RCLs. And if they lose the water, I'm not exactly sure if it's going to matter all that much. Because they were but already. This creek is making a second very offensive castle yeah. right next to Elk Park's island. Yeah, that's a pretty nice one, basically trying to control the raiding or rather the landing from his opponents. Yeah. Uh, but Elkwart realized all those important resources on the are on the left side, so yeah, maybe just he will try to uh, fight for it in the middle. But the water seems to be kind of, I would be saying, even lost at this stage for RCL, because they are losing on the left and on the right. And as you can see, that J squared is actually helping on both sides, both its flanks, which is interesting to notice. And I don't really think. That Arsias are spending all that many resources into the water. They are probably just focusing on the land right about now and really, yeah, just kind of hoping that what they have built so far is going to be enough. On the right side, it seems to be against J squared. So that's kind of a pretty bad fight for BS that they are not fighting together. J squared together with Philip AJS. That kind of miscommunication, a pretty bad one, actually, pretty costly for them. So they definitely have to hope that it's not going to be having any kind of lasting effect on them as Galeons are coming in from both White Court and Alyosha. And coinage from Philippe JS as well. Interesting. Um, Blitzkrieg uh, got uh, those, uh, really, those two castles in a really good position. But uh, he got a very weak economy and I, I'm not sure he can... Uh, can keep the mainland uh, map control in the middle. Yeah, just 56 villages, that's 
kind of low, the amount, the amount of right. buildings that he hopes to actually build units from. Pretty nice wall in at the top, basically. <laughs> Just spread protecting his part of the map. Not really willing to give up any kind of inch in there. And yeah, I was just kind of thinking that maybe those <laughs> plume arches could be going through, but they're not. But he has at least been able to steal the sheep, so he might be aiming for a bit of a bit of scouting through her. In the meantime, on the left, Blitzkrieg is basically right now being assaulted on his mainland. But since the gold is basically in the middle, it doesn't seem to be threatened all that much, so that's a pretty big bonus for him. But the gold is potentially a problem for Blitzkrieg, because as a Mayan, he could be using that for both extra TCs and for the castles. So if he cannot access that, that could be a problem for the game to come. And castle being dropped by El Quark on the mainland. So he is already preparing with Siege Workshop also to go against his opponent. It's a really nice castle from El Quark. It's basically controlling both those main goals and it's uh, in a really good position between his two town centers. And on the right there's another pretty good castle from White Court. Basically close close to tricky land in there between the waters in there and pretty big navy right about now by Aleoshan White Court which seems to be Basically signaling that BFs could be having a bit more problems that they may maybe might have expected a bit earlier. With Alyosha right now slinging into Blitzkrieg, it seems. So Blitzkrieg is probably going to be the main player that should be somehow stopping their opponents from establishing on the land all that much fully. So far we don't really see any landing from green. So it seems like that he is just locked to his mainland and even building castle in there. Well, well that's kind of telling us that he's not even anytime soon. Yeah, Blitzkrieg is uh, being fully slung. Uh, but so is uh, El Quark from the Viking player of BF team. Yeah. So uh, it's gonna be basically a land fight between two slung players. And it almost seems like that it's a double sling, that Philippe HS is slinging as well. Basically the same amount as J squared. And everything went into Le Quark, so that's a double sling from BFs into El Quark. And <laughs> that's quite risky, but could be what they need, but I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be enough because Blitz Blitzkrieg is also slung. So that basically nullifies at least one of them, and since he was there quite faster, and he's set up with all the extra castles and the town centers. Well, it might not be enough, but let's see. Let's see, because Elquark is an Imperial Age and he's going to be switching into Paladins. He's already trying to put down the castles from Blitzkrieg. Whereas in the middle, Alyosha is basically just booming, he's not doing anything else. As if the town centers next to crucial, next to crucial points on the map and the crucial resources, and he's having not really all that many villages. You can see that <laughs> Elkvark is having 93 already. It's like a double of absolutely anybody from RCL, yeah. and that's and the he's of imperial the... age, and he's like yeah. more than Blitz Creek, which is in yeah, pink the... now. So my uh, Elkvark might uh, push Blitz Creek back with his uh, cavaliers and traps before uh, Blitzkrieg even reaches the Imperial Age. Yeah, the double sling is really seems to be paying off so far, as the movement is going to be quite strong, and if, it, if they can somehow survive long enough to at least nullify the sling from Blitzkrieg, or rather into Blitzkrieg, well, that could be a pretty big problem for RCL, and even though they are doing a pretty good job on the water, right about now on the left side, as Alyosha has switched in there, trying to basically alleviate the pressure on his ally Blitzkrieg. Well, I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be enough, because on the right side, White Court is not really engaging, as he's yeah, knowing there's a bit of a bit of an armada from J-squared waiting for him. It's kind of locked in basically nothing. Nobody's winning in the water on the yeah, water I think RCL overreacted a bit to that early imp push on water from BF yeah, yeah. team. And uh, Blitzkrieg didn't didn't go up in time and now he's losing second castle, he might lose his third castle. So even though now he is imped 
he won't have any any buildings to produce. And Elk Vark is already upping Paladin, so it's yeah, looking it's really good so. from BF team. That's looking like the double sling into Elk Vark. It could actually pay off because there's literally nobody else who is, who is somehow set up. You can see that on the right side, White Court is having just TCs trying to boom now, which is kind of late <laughs> compared to Elk Vark and whatnot. So he's definitely not going to be able to help with anything in there. And Yellow is, yeah, not doing any kind of army. Just having the monastery for the relics. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. So it's literally going to be up to Blitzkrieg. And since Blitzkrieg is most definitely having the wrong unit, Plumed Arches against Paladins, well, this could be going quite surprisingly easily for BS, as opposed to what we have seen in the game before, because that was looking quite nicely for RCLs. So far, not really all that much. I think Elkvark realized pretty early that those three big uh, gold pies are on his side of the mainland. Yeah. And he, he he took them with castles. So even if he wasn't slink anymore, which he is, he still got those three huge gold piles. So I think he can basically fight alone in the mainland for uh, several uh, tens of minutes now, pretty easily. Yeah, he has basically conquered the left part of the map with a lot of resources for himself and there's not much that Blitzkrieg can actually do against him. He's switching into a pikeman, so that's of course going to be what would be expected. But there's not going to be anything for a push, there's just going to be a defense. And he might be able to stop Elkvark, but most definitely not gain the land, land back, which is basically the most important part right about now for both of these teams. Right Blitzkrieg uh, still doesn't have uh, Relic Plumets, and he's losing his last castle. Yeah. He's losing a ton of resources in the Rook Castle, so I'm not exactly sure how many stone he can actually have left. He right now has 2000, so yeah, he can build the castles, but of course, not going to be all that easy. And this is yet another important point for him, because right about now, it's going to be resulting in Alyosha also losing economy. And there's another bunch of stone right behind the yellow town center and that's one that he should be protecting as he's going to be needing a lot of stone with the rate that he's losing his castles he's also pretty badly housed he's actually at 100 and 111 being on population and Alkvark is engaging in the middle with paladins yeah and it oh, should that's... be an easy fight for him because there are just like 10 halves and a lot of but non-elite plumet archers and okay. especially with Tarsh and Bonus against range units, it should be a really easy fight for Alex Mark. No, and it's definitely been exactly that. And interesting stuff, that at the top of the island actually we see some green blobs. So Philip AGS has actually landed right next to his blue teammate. And blue seems to be kind of just guarding the top of the map. They are not really engaging together with red. So they are having a lot of boats and not doing anything. That is at least killing a few villages from Felipe AJS, but that's pretty much it. So I'm not exactly sure what's the plan. J Squad has just researched Canon Galeons. Um, I'm kind of thinking that Blue should be doing something with the water. He is helping on the left, where Yellow was kind of having the upper hand above El Quark. But so far, at least Blue is kind of stalling that. So he's not losing the water, or his team is not losing the water. But, well, on the land it seems like that it's going to be good enough for BFs not to not to lose the water to win the land instead. Yeah, the BF Viking player is like going full water now. He's defending both sides with his uh, galleons while green is slinging Elkvark. And it's like basically Elkvark got a huge army on the land and uh, the J Squared guy got a full army on water. They are slowly conquering both land and water, I think. Looks like uh, really well for the BF team. Yeah, it seems like going pretty well. So far, White Court is sending some extra villages onto the mainland, but he doesn't seem to be preparing for anything at all. He's not building any military buildings, so is he maybe fully swinging as well right now into his teammate in the middle, rather into the teal. Let's check White Court. Yes, he's slinging 2000 into Blitzkrieg. Everything into Blitzkrieg. So, yeah, they basically reacted with the same and are double slinging into 
to the teal player. So let's see if it's going to be strong enough. I'm not exactly convinced because Blitzkick is having 45 release. <laughs> As opposed to 108 from L. Clark. But well, the slings are going to be quite powerful. But I'm slightly afraid for them that it's going to be way too late. Because still no plumed archers into elites. And I don't think they are having even full upgrades into the armor. Into the armor at least. They are having just yes, they, they, are, they are not fully upgraded at all. And... Uh... And he, 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 aimed, uh, he aimed way too late, and now he's just losing one ki one castle, one by one. Yeah, this is going pretty convincingly uh, for BFs, for El Quark, and Blitzkrieg is basically just slowing him down. Which is quite probably not going to be enough, but they seem to be going for an offensive on the water on the right, as White Court has finished with a pretty good castle to help him with that, and is hoping that maybe can at least kill them in there, but with the Cannon Galeons coming from J squared, they are going to be getting rid of all the castles from White Court. Well, it's probably not going to be all that easy, as on the left side there's not much fighting to be had, it seems. Or is, ah, actually Blue is taking the fight to the opponents, so yeah, he's actually chasing Yellow inside his own base. So yeah, it seems like that Blue on the left is going to be winning the water. Whereas on the right side, Red is most definitely not winning and is probably going to be losing uh, to J squared as well. And with another castle right now being supported by Philippe AJS, yeah, it's definitely seeming like that J squared should be winning the water quite nicely on both sides. It's definitely a bit, bit of a problem for RCLs as they are also losing on the land. Yeah, bit by bit. Even though they are trying all they can. El Quark is playing a really good game. They, have, they were both slung, like double slung from his allies, and Teal got like 5k resources more than El Quark, but El Quark got still 100 or more, and he's pushing more and more. Well, and I checked already... the tributes, and so far Teal got more than 15k resources slung, while El Quark got just 10k. But he's still yeah. pushing very hard. Yeah, he was just faster and into the correct unit, so he had the advantage from the very start because they have chosen to sling into Lions RCLs, triple touches, which wasn't really all that bad idea. But BFs reacted quite nicely with slinging into a direct counter basically and very tough counter if played well, and that was played well because not even the Halberd years are. <laughs> Enough numbers to basically de do anything with all those paladins. His guard is pushing with cannon galleons on the right side. Red losses to castles and TC. Yeah, I'm moving forward with all the galleons in here, so it seems like that not even here uh, RCLs are going to be strong enough. White court switching or other researching cavaliers and forging. Well, it's kind of late into the game, but let's see if it can do something. So he's going to be joining in with Cavaliers at least. But no, GG's are being called right about now. And this was this was an interesting game, quite nicely played by BFs. And I think the difference was that actually BFs did have a plan from the very start. They knew what they were going to do. Whereas RCLs kind of improvised, I think. The triple fast castle was quite risky and... Yeah, didn't really pay off all that much, even though they landed quite fast. I think the deciding factor was that the Mayan player for RCL was very late to Imperial Age. So Elkwar gained a significant mm -hmm. advantage over him. And with Persian against Mayans, when you are faster in Imp and you are pushing first, then you it should be an easy game for you. Mm -hmm. I must say, a very well played from El Quark. He pushed uh, early with Gullies into Blitzkrieg base and even hit the yellow pocket from RCL. So he gained economic advantage for his own pocket, which was then uh, faster in Imperial Age with uh, Galleons pushing both sides. And then also a very well played on, on the land. Yes, yeah, so looking through the post games right about now, as the match is then finished as 1 1. 
So that's definitely pretty important points for Black Forest as they need all the points they can get in their race for the playoffs. Various RCLs as basically the first seeded team of Division 4 have found themselves in an interesting position as they are probably going to be fighting or rather having to fight against other players or other, other clans quite a lot to achieve the spot in the playoffs. So maybe you could have thought that it would be a bit easier for them but in the end it most definitely wasn't and BFs quite deserve the extra points that maybe they did not expect all that much. In the achievements, don't really see anything all that interesting that we wouldn't have already talked about. So yep, GG in here. So I'm going to...